Hey, Charlie. We need to talk. Do you still live with mom and dad? Oh, putt. Why are you asking me that? Yeah, I do still live with them. What? You really do still live with them? Unbelievable. How much longer are you planning to live there? You're pretty much 30 years old already. We're not children anymore. I can't believe you're still so dependent on mom and dad. Are you not embarrassed at all? Dependent on mom and dad? I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. What makes you think that? I think I am very independent already. Why don't you understand what I'm telling you? I also want you to answer my question. I'm asking you how much longer you're planning on living with our parents. You really need to move out and stop causing them trouble. You're unemployed and you barely even leave the house you grow up. Wait, putt. I think that there have been lots of misunderstandings. I'm not unemployed at all. I work remotely from home. I don't leave the house that often, but that's because I'm working most of the time. What do you think you're saying? I know that's a lie for sure. I'm not going to believe you. You're not the kind of person that's able to work from home. What does that even mean? I really don't understand why you're even texting me right now. Hurry up and just get to the point. Why are you even complaining about me still living with mom and dad? I thought that you were planning to move back in with us. Yeah. I'm going to be moving back in from next month. I really don't like the fact that I've got to start living with you again. Then you're going to be in the same situation as me. I don't get why you're mocking me for living with mom and dad. There's also a good reason why I'm still here. Stop putting me in the same category as you. Our situations are completely different. My new workplace is kind of close to our parents' house. And that's why I'm planning to move in temporarily. I don't plan on living there forever like you. Can't believe that I'm going to have to live with an old man like you. You're calling me an old man? We're only two years apart. That doesn't really matter right now. I just don't like the fact that you're 30 years old and still unemployed. Are you not embarrassed that you're still so dependent on mom and dad? I don't know why you think I'm unemployed. I work a full-time job and earn a decent salary. Why can't you just accept the fact that I work remotely from home? It's a normal thing to do these days. I am not dependent on our parents at all. I hope that you can be more understanding of my situation. We're going to be living together again after all. I was hoping that we could get along. Why should I try to get along with you? You're pretty much a parasite to this family. All you are is a nuisance. There's literally no reason for me to get along with you. You don't need to worry about any of that. I am not a nuisance at all. If you have no intention of getting along with me then please just leave me alone. At least we have our own rooms. We can mind our own business. Actually, you're a nuisance just by living in the same house. Your being in the house has a negative effect on everyone else. I'm going to be going out the house every day to work while you're being lazy at home. That's not fair at all. I'm sorry, but I'm starting to lose my patience now. I told you that I'm working from home. I am not being lazy at all. You really should stop caring so much about what I do. Just focus on your own life and career. Oh Charlie. I don't need someone like you to be giving me advice. Charlie. Are you at home right now? Yeah, I'm. What's wrong? Do you need me for something? You want to go on a road trip today? What's the matter with you all of a sudden? I thought you hated me. You kept on ignoring all my messages till today. There's no reason really. I just felt like asking you. We're siblings after all. I thought that we should spend some time together once in a while. I'm really surprised to be receiving a message like this from you. It's really rare for you to ask me to come out with you. So let's go on a short road trip. Yeah, that sounds nice. I kind of felt like driving actually. 
I'll be done with working around an hour. I'll be free after that. Did you really just say work? There's no need for you to pretend like that. I know that you're still unemployed. So you still think that? I'm really not the pathetic kind of person that you think. I land a job with decent salary. I'm also financially supporting our parents now. I think they're very happy that I still live with them. What are you talking about? That's all lies. If you were really working a decent job, you wouldn't still be living with. You don't even leave the house at all. There's actually a reason why I'm living like how I am. I can't really tell you the reason, but I hope that you can understand and respect my situation. Whatever, Charlie. Stop with the fake stories now. I'll come and pick you up in an hour. Make sure that you're ready by that time. Fine, I guess I'll start getting ready. Where are you even planning on going? Do you remember that mountain we used to go hiking? Of course, how can I forget? I thought that mountain trail got closed off though. But there are some other trails that we can go to. I heard it's a little dangerous, but I think we should give it a go. Isn't that place a little far away though? It's near where we used to live when we were back in high school. Don't worry. It's not that far away. I don't think it's going to take two hours to drive there. Why do you even want to go hiking there all of a sudden? Did you suddenly want to feel like a child again or something? Yeah, I wanted to go somewhere nostalgic. It might be a little cold so make sure that you bring a coat. Are we planning to be walking around for a while? This really is so sudden. I'm still kind of surprised. I just thought it would be nice to have some time to ourselves. It's going to be a nice opportunity for us to start getting along well again. I'm still a little confused, but it's starting to seem kind of fun. I sort of wanted some time to be able to talk to you after all. This is going to be a good opportunity for that. I'll be waiting for you to arrive. Okay. Answer my call now, Pot. Are you insane? What? Why are you able to call me? I have your phone. There's no way you should be able to do this. I have a second phone that I carry around with me. Anyway. There's no point in you calling me. I don't have any intention of picking up. Are you serious? Is this a prank or something? I can't believe that you have a second phone. Well, I can't text you anymore. I'm driving right now. What? You piece of trash. Where the heck are you? I can't believe that you ditched me in the middle of this mountain? Yeah, I just got to the bottom of the mountain with my car. And I'm just about to get back onto the main road now. What? Why you did that to me? This place is kind of scary. Are you out of your mind? Well, I have to do that to kick you out of the house. I'm sorry, but I have no choice. You have no place in this house anymore now. Go and find a job and place to live by yourself. You really needs to start being more independent. I can't believe you're doing this to me. What is wrong with you, Putt? I guess this was your intention in the first place. I should have known your plan was to abandon me. You're such a psycho. Yeah, that was my plan from the very start. It was stupid of me to trust you in the first place. I should have known that something was wrong. It's too late to realize now, Charlie. There's no need for you to come back home anymore. You understand how I feel about you now, right? Don't ever show your face in front of me again. You're a huge nuisance to our entire family. I totally understand how you feel about me now. I'm going to come home to collect my belongings then. Don't bother going into my room, by the way. I'll move out as soon as I collect everything. Actually, I'll dispose of all your belongings for you. There's no need to do that. One of my friends is heading over to collect all of my belongings for me. There are some important documents that I need for work in my room. I can't have you disposing of important documents. I can't believe you're still pretending that you have a job. How much longer are you planning to use that lie? 
I guess I don't really care either way as long as you move out. Just make sure that you never come back home. You need to realize that you're a nuisance to me and our parents. You're such a useless piece of trash. You don't need to worry about me at all. I'm pretty sure that I'm never going to be seeing you ever again. I actually cared for you because you're my little brother. None of that matters anymore. Charlie. Charlie. I'm sorry, but who's that? Stop messing around. It's kind of an emergency. There's no way you've forgotten who I am. Your brother. Putt. What do you want from me? I thought that we weren't going to see or talk to each other ever again. That doesn't matter anymore. I wasn't serious about that at all. I'm in some serious trouble right now. I need your help. So you're asking for help after you abandoned me in the middle of a mountain? What do you want from me? Who cares about that? You were fine, right? You managed to get out of the mountain alive. That doesn't make it fine at all. It was dark and I had no signal on my phone. It could have ended really badly. So what? Do you want me to apologize or something? I'm sorry for what I did to you. I don't need your apology. Well okay. I don't have all day you know. I'm in a lot of trouble thanks to you. It's your fault and you need to take responsibility. What are you talking about? I never did anything to get you into trouble. Is it really true that you were the one making the loan payments for this house? You're asking me that now? I had no idea about it. I thought that you were unemployed all this time. How did you earn the money to pay the loan for the bank? It's not cheap at all. You're asking me that now? Don't you have any memory? You really need to start listening a little more. How dare you say that to me? I'm much smarter than you. None of that matters right now. Mom and Dad are telling me to pay the loan fees and the utility bills for the house. They're saying that I am responsible because I was the one that kicked you out. It doesn't make any sense. But, it makes total sense. I was paying for everything related to that house right up until you kicked me out. Did you not hear that I had started up my own company? What? You have your own company? Yeah, I'm the CEO of company in the town. I've always told you that I work remotely from home. It's been several years since I started up my company and it's been really successful so far. I probably earn around 10 times more than what an average person earns. What? Are you being serious? But if you have that much money, why don't you pay off the loan for the house? Well, I can pay off that loan anytime I want. But I prefer to invest my money to the company. Then I can gain the profit from my business. And of course, the profit I get is much more than the monthly loan. I'm serious. There's no point in me lying about something like this. I can't believe that you're a CEO of a company. Why didn't you tell me about this up till now? I also don't understand why you're still living with our parents. It doesn't make any sense. Surely. You can live wherever you want then if you earn that much money. You should be living in your own house already. I had no other choice because mom and dad are on a huge amount of debt. What? What did you just say? I'm only living with them so that I can help them pay back all the money that they owe. I've been paying for all their living expenses as well. Dad is currently using his entire salary to pay off the debt. That's the reason I was living with them up until recently. What? I thought that Dad had a pretty good salary. There's just no way they could be in debt. You really do live in your own world, Putt. You don't know anything our parents. Parents made a pretty big mistake, their business. And that's why they're in debt right now. There's a pretty big difference in the amount of money that me and you earn. I think that it's going to be financially difficult for you to live in that house right now. I didn't know anything about this at all. It's not fair. Why didn't you warn me about this before I decide to move in? I was waiting for an opportunity to talk to you about it. 
but you never seem to answer any of my text messages. I thought I could talk to you about it when you asked me to go on that short road trip. I did not expect to get abandoned like that at all. I'm sorry, Charlie. I actually had no bad intentions at all. It was all just a misunderstanding. You stole my phone and left me alone in the mountain. I'm pretty sure that's got to be a crime. What do you think would have happened if I didn't have my second phone with me? I don't really see you as my brother anymore. You're a complete stranger to me. Don't be like that. We're siblings. I also have no idea how I'm going to pay for any of this. I thought that I wouldn't have to pay for any of my living expenses if I lived with mom and dad. You need to solve this problem by yourself. I'm done with you. After that, Putt had to pay all the living expenses and loans for parents. He also begged me to move back in with them however I had already blocked his number. Then, Putt ended up having to borrow a large amount of money. He really should have thought about it more carefully before kicking me out of the house. I have nothing to do with him anymore. He needs to learn a lesson of respect. Hey, honey. Where are you right now? What's wrong, husband? Are you finished with work finally? Yep. Yep. I've done all work today. I'm just asking because Samuel messaged me and said he's got sick after coming home. Oh, really? Did he call you? Yeah, yeah. He said you're not home and he hasn't had dinner yet. It's half past eight o'clock, you know. Where are you right now? Oh, I thought I told you before. It's Sheriff First Party, and we are joining a party at a bar in the city center now. We're going to be out all night. It seems that you haven't told me about this yet. It's better that you tell me in advance whenever you're going to be out late. Ah, uh, I really thought that I told you. Honest mistake. Sorry, babe. Still, before leaving this late, please consider our son. Samuel is only 10 years old. He can't be home alone like this. Yeah, I get it. I promise this will be the last time. Anyway, did you come home? I'm on my way home now and buy Samuel some food and medicine. I left as soon as I got Samuel's message. Ah, uh, so you'll be home pretty soon then? In that case, there was really no need for you to message me. Of course. I know you need your time and to hang out with friends. But Samuel is still small and he got sick. Do you think you could cut back just a little, for his sake? Excuse me? Who is it that does the housework every day and watches over him? And yet, you still criticize me for occasionally going out with my friends? I've never said that. I'm completely fine with you spending time with your friends once in a while. But you're going out almost every single day lately. Don't you think you should spend a little bit more time at home? No, actually, I can't. Well, if you're suddenly so concerned about this, you know, why don't you come home earlier? All you ever talk about is work, work, work. Have you ever thought of lending me a hand once in a while? I really wish I could spend more time at home, but it's been quite hectic lately, and there's a lot to get done. If that's the situation, maybe you could give me a break, too. It feels like you're being hypocritical. Come on. I at least complete all the housework and other tasks on my days off. Amazing. You help out twice a week. And I have to do everything myself the rest of the days. What do you want? Husband of the year. Okay, okay. I am really grateful for everything that you do. I would just really appreciate it if you could show just a little more. I don't know. Motherly affection? At least it's for Samuel's sake. Men your age constantly complain about how women should always act or think like mothers. You need to get with the times, Walter. I won't allow you to burden me with those kinds of outdated values. Men my age? What do you mean, Stella? We're only nine years apart, you know. I don't think the generation gap in values is all that huge. Oh, did I hear your feelings? I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's not like I'm not aware every day how much older I am than you. I should hope not. But on the other hand, you got yourself a beautiful and hot wife like me. That should have made you satisfied, Walter. Yes, 
I'm truly grateful. But I'd appreciate it if you could also think about Samuel a bit more. It's important for a little boy to spend time with his mother. Oh my god! Are we still talking about this? Why do I have to put up with this every single time I go out? I can't have any freedom just because I'm a mom? I never said that. You know what I've had it. Do you want to divorce? Considering that I'm almost there. Hey, hold on! Hold on! We cannot talk about the divorce only for this reason. Can you calm down a little bit? It's your fault. You just can't help yourself from nagging and complaining all the time, can you? I have to think about Samuel. Will you listen to me at least? This isn't about Samuel. And just so you know, I'll be taking custody if we do end up getting divorced. So unless you're prepared for it, don't push me at this time. All right, I got it. I'm sorry. Please don't get angry. Do you promise not to keep nagging me all the time? Yes, I promise. Sorry I went too far. I'll be more careful in the future. You won't mind if I go out with my friends, will you? No, not at all. You need to unwind every once in a while, same as anyone. Exactly. If you can understand that, then I believe we'll be fine now. I apologize for getting frustrated earlier, Walter. No worries. It's all right. Just please message me when you're going to be home late. I just get worried about Samuel if I don't know. Okay, I understand. I'll be more careful next time. Thank you. Me too. I'll be more careful with how I talk next time. I appreciate that. You're so nice and understanding. And you love me too, right? I love you so much. Thanks. I'm going to get back to the birthday party then, okay? Good night. Good night. A few weeks later. Do you have some free time right now? Of course what's going on. By the way, where are you at the moment? It's already 10 o'clock. Don't worry about that right now. I have mentioned I have something important to share with you. Are you paying attention? All right, go ahead. So what's this important thing you want to tell me? Ah. Uh. All right. No, I know you're a very understanding person, so I don't actually think you'll get mad at all. But I just want you to promise just in case. Well, it's impossible to promise until I know what you're going to say. Okay, let's tell me what it is. No, sorry. I want you to promise not to get mad first, and then I'll tell you. I'm not sure whether I can love someone who is unable to keep a simple promise. Fine. I promise I won't get angry. Now will you tell me what's up? You swear, no matter what I say, you definitely won't get angry. Yeah, I swear, all right? Now what is it? Okay, well, I'll go ahead and apologize up front. I'm really sorry, but I got pregnant with my boyfriend. What? What? Boyfriend? Having a baby? Are you serious? Now I already told you that I'm sorry, and you promised you wouldn't get angry. I know, sorry. I was really surprised. But is it true? Are you really pregnant? Absolutely. I went to the hospital and got confirmation. And I think you should also know this. No matter what happens, I'm definitely going to keep the baby. I know that might be difficult for you to accept, but I'm sure it's better than being divorced. So please don't complain, all right? Really? That's fantastic. You've got my full support if you decide to have the baby. Actually, I insist. Oh, to be honest, that's not the reaction I was expecting. I was prepared for a fight, but right now I'm not even sure what to say. Why? What's wrong? You're pregnant, right? That's reason to be happy about... Well, yes, that's true. But I mentioned it's my boyfriend's child, not yours. What are you saying? That's the best part. I swear, right now, I feel so thankful. Don't get me wrong. It's wonderful that you're excited. Yeah, that's great. I want you to have the baby. I'd be disappointed if you didn't. Really? I can't express how relieved I am to hear you say that. Thank you. No, thank you. This is the best news I've heard in a while. That's wonderful. Of course, I also want to raise the child. That means I'll need your financial support, Walter. 
Are you joking? What are you talking about? Obviously, I won't be providing you with financial assistance. What? What? Why not? So why you were happy and supportive? Of course, I was happy. I finally have a cut and dry reason to divorce you. Divorce? Why? Isn't it obvious? What part is confusing? Anyway, you got pregnant with other guy and want to raise the kid. After we divorce, I don't really care about your choices. Why are you acting so strangely? I thought he was happy about that. Are you truly fine with our divorce? Why do you think I'm the strange one here? What's confusing you? Your behavior is definitely weird. What is it that you don't comprehend? You cheated on me, got pregnant, and then revealed it to me. Yes, but you never question what I say. You never disobey me. I didn't think you were even capable of it. I really didn't anticipate you doing something like starting a divorce conversation. Oh man, I just knew you would try to turn this around and get angry at me. It's impressive, really. I have no idea where you get that kind of nerve. So you're really okay if we get divorced? You realize you'll never be able to get a smoking hot young wife like me, right? It's okay for me. I will never regret excluding you from my life. And by the way, you should also stop describing yourself as young and smoking gorgeous. It makes me goosebumps. I really appreciate this attitude out of you. It means you've done a good job in life. I am trying to compliment you over here, but don't get carried away. Me get carried away? Okay, whatever. Besides, are you gonna divorce me? I can say whatever I want. Really? Do you feel free to talk to me like that? If things keep going like this, we're actually gonna get divorced. And like I said, I'm going to take Samuel with me. Yeah. Good luck with that. There's no way that I don't get custody. You have no chance. Oh, you really think so? Do you think that I will let you raise Samuel? Whatever. You can think whatever you want. It won't change anything. I'm the one who should be saying that. Mothers almost always get custody of the children. You work all the time and have little time for our son. There's like no chance that you get custody. Weekends at best, but I'll fight even that. Do you even want custody, really? You never really seem to care about Samuel. Honestly, I don't care that much. But this isn't about him. I've always mentioned taking custody if we divorce. So if you're going through with a divorce, I'll definitely pursue custody. Yeah, I had a feeling that's how it was. Though, if you just agree, it would simplify things. Just a thought. That's not happening, though. Even my mistake won't affect my custody claim. No worries. So that's the way it's going to be, huh? All right then. Let's see how it will go. You don't need to remind me. I think we both know how it will unfold. Anyway, I'll be back home tomorrow. I'll be expecting a sincere apology from you. The next day. Walter, I'm on my way home. I expect to hear your apology for last night. Why would I apologize to you? Oh, what's this?、Mm. Did you forget yesterday's conversation already? I'll make sure you are never permitted to even look at a picture of Samuel again if we get divorced. You'll never see him again for the rest of your sad life. I think you're confused. If anyone isn't going to see him again, it's you. You don't have any right to stop me. Actually, I do. It looks like I'm going to get full custody, and that's in no small part thanks to you. Thank you so much. Okay, really? What are you talking about? Do you even know what the judge thinks about when deciding who gets custody of a child? I don't think an absent parent like you has much of a chance. Obviously. <laughs> Maybe in a normal situation, but remember what you told me yesterday. You mentioned that you don't really care about him. And what's your point? I don't see how that matters. Plus, you're pregnant with someone else right now. You said you plan to have that child and raise it. Yeah, I did. Again, what's your point, Walter? You're gonna have another person's baby, and you will not have time to take care of Samuel. Do you really think that sounds like a mother who will take proper care of Samuel? Seems like enough reason for me to get custody.
Wait a moment. That's it. That's it. You think I can't get custody because of that? Well, it's certainly that Samuel definitely won't choose to go with you when the court asks him. And it looks better for me because I've already talked to my boss and explained the current situation. So I'll be able to be home on time every day from now on no matter what. I'd say the chances are starting to look slim for you. Whatever. I'm still not sure if you're really going through with the divorce. This is just one of your jokes, isn't it? Not funny, as always. No, I'm going to divorce you and I'm going to get custody of our son. I'm dead serious about this. You say that, but I know you still love me. You told me you loved me just the other day. I wasn't as certain that I could get custody back then as I am now. I, therefore, had little else to say at that time. So, now that you're feeling more confident to get divorced, do you honestly believe someone else will be interested in you? You? An old man, good for absolutely nothing but making money? Are you truly okay with this? As long as I can have a peaceful life with my son, I'll be content. If money is so important to you, you should seek child support from the person who got you pregnant. That would be a better choice than staying married to an older man whom you don't respect. No, I can't. He is now just starting his own business. He needs my support, if anything. So, you've been giving him our money? You know what? Never mind. We're getting divorced anyway. And I'll be looking to get child support from you, by the way. So, you should probably contact a lawyer. Are you out of your mind? You know that I don't work. And he doesn't need money either. Do you believe that a judge will order me to pay child support when I can't even afford to care for my new kid? Ah, that's a good point. But you don't need to worry about the new baby. I've talked to your parents, and they said that they would raise the child. So you can rest easy on that front. What are you saying? Did my parents know this? You told them all. Well, of course. We're getting divorced after all. They need to know. I've already spoken to my parents as well. And I actually spoke to your boyfriend already as well, so he's completely up to date on the situation. And bad news for you, but it looks like he's out. You spoke to David? You've got to be kidding me. I've always planned to get custody of Samuel and divorce you. I've been thinking about this for ages now. So I hired someone to figure out where you were actually going all this time. Are you freaking kidding me? Do you realize what a serious breach of privacy that is? Don't give me that. You're so clearly the one in the wrong here. Anyway, I didn't find anything that would actually help me get custody. But at least I was able to put the info to some use now. I can't believe you. This is all your fault from the very beginning, just so you know. You neglected me. Why do I have to sit here and listen to you blame me for everything? You're the one who decided to go out all the time drinking with your friends and going to clubs and ignored your son. What else am I supposed to do here? Even your little son can understand that you were wrong. He's angry, too. He wanted her mother. Okay, Walter. It's all my fault. I won't go out anymore. I'll do better at taking care of Samuel. So please forgive me. Sorry. It's way too late in the game for me to be tricked by something like that. I am perfectly clear, headed about this, and can't be confused. But you said you love me, and I believe you. I know you don't really want to divorce me. And I still want to live with you. I don't want to get divorced. No matter how you look at it, there's no other choice but to get divorced. You don't love me. You love going out. You love going to clubs. If we get divorced, you can do that as much as you want without me hassling you. I know that's the life you really want. And more than that, Stella, well, I don't love you, and I want to get divorced more than anything else in the world. After that, Stella's boyfriend left her, and she had to go back to her parents' house. After all, she eventually signed the divorce papers. I was eventually granted full custody, along with child support provided by her family. Furthermore, her parents agreed that they would care for the new baby once it was born. Since we had information about Stella's boyfriend, her parents were eventually able to secure children. Support from him as well. Samuel and I decided to move to a new house to start fresh. Fortunately, Samuel had already become accustomed to his mother's absence, 
so he quickly adapted to it, the new situation. I think both of us are smiling more than before. Hi, Mark. Is everything okay with you? Are you done with work yet? Food's almost ready if you're coming home for dinner. Not yet. I need to take care of a few more things before I can come back. I'll be a bit later than usual. You and Maya can eat without me. Later than usually. Again. This is the third day in a row. Anyways, I guess I'm going to sleep first. I'll leave your food in the fridge. You can heat it up later on and eat it. Got it. I'm getting back to work then. Before you go, I need you to ask about your day off on Thursday next week. It's been a while since we last went, so why don't we all go to the movies again? You know, as a family? Maya's also been saying that she wants to go, so it's the perfect opportunity. What? Next week? Yeah. Didn't you mention you had off? So I thought it might be good to go then. Yeah, I remember now. I also forgot to tell you I can't be home then. I actually have work that day, too. The principal asked me if I could come in that day to prepare for new school year. So I ended up saying yes. What? Why'd you say yes to her already? This is really something we could have talked about first. Weren't you saying for a while that you'd definitely be free that day? What happened to that? What the hell? What choice did I have? She asked me specifically. It's not like I could just say no to her face. Don't be ridiculous. Hey, chill out! You know, Maya was looking forward to going out with you for once. She said Daddy used to play with me at home all the time. And just today, she told me after class, Daddy used to take me to the park in the movies all the time. She's really lonely without you these days. What am I supposed to tell her? Yeah, I get that, but I'm really busy right now. You understand that I can't just say no to the principal, right? We've been through this. And to be honest... It really doesn't help that you keep texting me this kind of stuff. If anything, it just distracts me from my work, which means I have to stay here longer. Look, I get where you're coming from. But you've been saying that for a while, haven't you? Yeah, and nothing has changed. You're always saying that you're busy with work. For the whole week, you leave home early in the morning and come home late at night. Even if you're home on the weekends, all you do is mindlessly scroll through your phone, read your magazines, or watch TV. You don't play with Maya? You don't help me with the chores. What are you trying to say? I get that you're tired from being busy with work, but can't you at least care about Maya a little more? I have to work too, you know. It's not like I'm sitting around doing nothing all day. And I can't just keep on doing all this by myself. Honestly, what's your problem? Are you implying you're the only one who has to work hard? That's not what I said. Even if you're busy, it would be nice if you could spend a bit more time thinking about the family. Work has always been busy for you, but think about it, there was never anything like this. You know, come to think of it, you've been acting strange lately. Are you stupid? Have you forgotten what my job is? I'm a teacher, which means I'm responsible for the collective future of a whole classroom of students. I'm out here raising the next generation. That's the kind of responsibility on my shoulders right now. That means I can't just start cutting corners wherever I want just because my daughter wants to drag me to the movies or whatever. And it also means that sometimes I have to drop everything I have to focus on my work. Do you understand? And you think that's a good enough reason to go and let your daughter feel lonely without you? Look, never mind about the chores. I can take care of the apartment by myself. But Maya has only one dad, and that's you. Care about her a little more, wouldn't you? It wouldn't kill you. Or you can try harder to do something about it. Unlike me, you don't have to stay late at work every day. What do you do anyways? Teach kids to dance. Give me a break. Hey, watch it. And it's not like teaching dance is an easy job. You know how hard it is to get kids to do what you want, don't you? Besides, it's physically tiring when you have to repeat movements over and over again. Look, if I don't understand what it's like to be in your shoes, then I don't think it's fair for you to comment on my job either. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't really care. Anyways, I'm busy right now. Busy enough that it'd be a good time for you to get off my case already. Don't you dare forget that I'm the one working hard to put food on the table for you and Maya. You're really missing the point here, right? I'm just saying that it would be nice for you to just think a little bit about hanging out with Maya. How am I missing the point? All I'm doing is saying it as it is. God, I'm really too tired to talk to you right now. I don't want to see your dumb face today. I'm staying at a hotel for the night. Don't come looking for me. Hey, wait a second. Don't run away from this. I'm not running away from anything all. I'm doing is trying to explain the reality of the situation to you. I still have work to do, and all you're doing is getting in the way. Don't text me again. 
if you send me another nagging text telling me to do this or that, I'm not coming home for the next while. After a few weeks. Hey Lisa, can you go to the dry cleaners to pick up my coat? It's getting cold and I want to use it over the weekend. You're a black coat, right? Got it? Where did you want to go over the weekend? Are you taking me out anywhere special? If you didn't have any specific plans, I was thinking that new amusement park just out of town might be nice. What are you talking about? Why would I be taking her out all? I'm doing is going to work. I have to work over the weekend this week, too. What? Are you serious? I told you I can't be at home this weekend. That's why I asked you to look after Maya. Really? Did you say something like that? Okay. Well, I can't do that on ways. No way. I even reminded you a few times. What am I supposed to do about it? I don't have time to take care of Maya. I have work at school. That doesn't mean you can just go and do things like this. What are we supposed to do about Maya? She's still in elementary school. Are we supposed to just leave her at home on her own? Can you not do something about it? Like reschedule or something? It's weekend. Stop bothering me. I hope you realize I don't want to do this either. But the school asked me to stay. So what the hell do you want me to do about it? Besides, do you really think I can just walk up to my supervisor and tell her that I don't want to work? Just because I have to look after my kid? But why can't you, can't you tell them that you had a family emergency or something? There are so many better ways you could put it if you actually tried. It's not like they'll say no. There's a child, your child being left all alone for a whole day. And I really have to go out on that day. You can ask Anna to take care of her. She lives close by, so you can just drop her off there and she'll take care of things. Because you are a father, Mark. You seriously think we should ask your sister again? Do you realize how many times you've had to ask her for this? She and her husband have to work, too. It's not like they're any less busy than we are. Not to mention, did you forget the fact that they just gave birth to a child of their own? They're busy. You still want us to keep depending on them because you can't look after your own child for a single day? This is exactly why I asked you in advance if you could look after her. Why do you care besides she doesn't think about that kind of stuff? Also, she likes Maya, and she'll take care of her properly. I fail to see how there's anything wrong with this arrangement. Yeah, you could have said that if they actually had the free time to look after another child. But just look at the situation they're in. How much worse do you want to make it for them? What's worse is that they have their own plans, so we can't suddenly step in and ask them to drop everything for Maya. What? So my plans don't matter? Is that what you're saying? I don't know how many times I have to repeat myself. But it's not like I want to keep on staying long at work like this. And just so you know, I do actually want to spend time with Maya. If you really think that, then why can't you discuss that with your supervisors? Even before that, I asked you for this a while ago. You're the one that went and decided to take home more work after the fact. Besides, I really don't understand why you can't tell them you have an emergency. What if Maya got sick? Or got seriously hurt? Would they still keep you then? I also don't understand what there is to do at a school on the weekend. That's not so urgent. I don't want to keep repeating myself. What you have to realize is that I can't just tell them that I have to look after my child. That excuse is not good. If so, I wouldn't be here working so hard forever. In any case, I'm not skipping out on work. Once you stop being stupid, you can handle Maya by yourself. Stupid. I'm trying to raise a genuine concern here. If you hate it so much, why don't you try harder to fight it? Instead, all you ever do is take it out on me. What's going on here? You just don't have any clue, do you? I don't want to talk to you anymore about this. Whatever. Fine. I give up. I'm going to look for someone to look after Maya while I'm gone. Yeah, do that anyways. Don't depend on me for this kind of stuff from now on. At that weekend. Maya, sweet mommy. Sorry for making you wait at home all on your own. I'll come back as soon as I can, okay? Are you still playing with Jenny at the park? I'll be fine, Mom. It's about time for you to have lunch. I'm on the way home so that I can have lunch. Jenny's mommy said that she would drive me back. Wow, that's real nice of her. Take care of getting back now. Also, don't forget to say thank you to Jenny's mommy. There's a sandwich and some vegetables for you in the fridge. So all you have to do is put it in the microwave before eating it? You remember how to use the microwave, right? Don't be silly, mommy. I'm already 10 years old. I know how to use a microwave. Wow, that's great, sweetie. You're so smart. Let me know when you get home. I've got home. Good, sweetie. Do you have your key for the apartment? 
Yeah, I put it in my bag to keep it safe. Okay, remember to lock the door once you go inside. Then make sure to wash your hands before you eat. Got it? And don't forget to brush your teeth after you finish eating. Got it, Maya. Are you inside yet, Mommy? Someone's inside our house. Someone? What do you mean by that? Is Daddy home from work already? I don't know. When I opened the door, I saw someone's pair of shoes on the ground. These shoes that I've never seen before. What? Maya, hold on. You can't go inside, okay? Is Jenny's mom still there? Did she go back already? No, she took me all the way to the front door. Okay, good. Just wait there for a sec. You can go to Jenny's house and play with her for a bit, okay? Okay, will, Mommy. But who is inside the house, Mommy? Don't worry about it, honey. It's just a visitor, I think. Just wait at Jenny's place while I deal with them, okay? Okay, Mommy. Come pick me up soon, Mommy. Of course, sweetie. Mommy loves you. I love you, too. Right after that. Can you pick up the phone, Mark? Hey, what the hell is your problem? I'm at work right now. Stop trying to bother me. I told you yesterday, didn't I? I have to work this weekend. There you are. If you were really at work, then maybe I would have apologized. But do you not get that? I'm calling you right now because there's something we need to talk about. What? What do you want? And what do you mean by, uh, if... Are you doubting that I'm at work? Or did you just contact me to send me some stupid joke like this? I don't know if you would call it a joke. But tell me, since when did you start working from home? Also, tell me who the woman next to you is. What? What? Like I said, what are you talking about? This is a sick joke, you know. As I said, it's not really a joke. I'm asking you a question to which I'd appreciate an answer. Then what do you mean by the woman next to me? What do you mean by working from home? I'm at the school right now. Did the school suddenly move into our apartment building? I got a text message from Maya a hot minute ago. What do you think she said? What? I don't know. Come on, where's the fun in that? Take a guess. Like I said, I don't know. You're wasting my valuable time. I have better things to do right now than play your stupid games. She said, someone's inside the house. Why would she say that? She's not home right now. Didn't you say you were going to find someone to look after her today? And surprise. I couldn't find anyone on such short notice. And guess what? That's why I asked one of her friend's moms to look after her in the morning. But once she got sent home, she found that someone else was there before her. And then she told me. I don't understand what you're talking about. When was Mia in the apartment? Don't worry. I didn't let her all the way in. I couldn't let her see what you were up to after all. I asked that friend's mom to take her to their home for the time being. Just look at you causing trouble for everyone, everywhere you go. You must be awfully proud of yourself. That has nothing to do with a woman by my side, right? All she said is that someone was at home. Well, there is one, isn't there? In the living room, right next to you at this very moment. She's sitting on the sofa with you, isn't she? Do you like her long hair, her smooth, flawless skin? Oh, gosh, is that the principal that you mentioned that she asked you to work over the weekends? Say, why aren't you two put on some clothes already? It's awfully cold today. What are you saying? Sorry. Turns out I can see everything if you can believe it. There's not a single excuse or a turn of phrase that'll save your sorry ass at this point. What do you mean, you can see everything? You didn't notice. You know the camera in the living room. The camera? When did you put a camera up and why? Last night. In fact, because you decided to refuse his use to help me at the last minute, I can't find anyone to take care of Maya. I realized she'd be all on her own for a prolonged period of time. Now my first thought was, what a poor excuse for a father you are, breaking every single promise you ever made to me or Maya in the past few months. But then I thought about Maya. I know difficult for you to understand since I wanted to be able to watch over her throughout the day. I decided it would be the responsible thing to do to set up a nanny cam just in case anything went wrong. You're kidding, right? Why would you do something like that? Just imagine the camera I set out to protect my daughter. Turns out, it ends up catching my husband in the act of cheating. Well, I certainly didn't expect that to happen. So, this is the kind of work you've been staying late for all the time with that principal, huh? It's really not what it looks like. 
Well, unfortunately for you, I've been watching the stream from the camera ever since Maya told me that someone else was home. I can't take it anymore. I'll bring the divorce papers when I get home. Wait, divorce? Are you being serious right now? Are you gonna turn Mia into a kid without a dad? I think it's important enough for me to decide by myself and for that matter. I don't think the opinion of someone who left the family behind to play with women is really worth listening to here. Goodbye, Mark. After that, Mark was extremely sorry for having an affair with the principal, promised to change, and hoped Lisa would forgive him. Lisa filed for divorce from Mark on the grounds that Mark had an affair and left his family uncared for. A few weeks later in court, amid Mark's objections, Lisa and Mark were declared divorced. Lisa has won custody of her child, and the house belongs to Lisa for her and her daughter to live in. Mark had to move out of the house and spend money every month to take care of Maya until she turned 18 years old. Good day, Miyuki. What are you up to now? Hello there, Diana. I was about to leave to go shopping. I need to go grocery shopping for tonight's meal. Did you require my assistance with anything? You're going to the supermarket at this hour? Isn't it becoming late? That implies you haven't even begun to prepare dinner for tonight. I haven't even gotten home yet because I just finished working. Actually, I'm about to begin driving to the grocery shop from work. Is there anything more I should know? I can't believe you're still working this late. You should devote your entire time to being a full-time housewife. Are you certain you're getting all of your chores and cooking done properly? You must not be slack. If you are, I will not forgive you. I'm not doing anything slack. My husband and I agreed that I would continue to work at home even after we married. He stated that he would assist me with housework and cooking. That is why I'm not a full-time housewife. I believe you should concentrate only on being a housewife. You're still not pregnant since you're still working? I'm getting a little tired of waiting for you to give birth to my grandson. I want to visit my grandchildren while I can. It's entirely your fault. A nicer woman would have already given me a grandchild. Did you call solely to say that? Is that all you've got to say to me? You're quite arrogant. How dare you respond to me in that way? I'm sorry, but I don't have the time to talk to you about something that isn't urgent. Is it all right if we talk later? When I have some free time? It's a true emergency. I'd like to speak with you about it right now. It's about the money you send me each month. I'd like you to send me $2,000 instead of $1,000. What happened? Why do you suddenly need more money? The $1,000 you've been sending me is simply insufficient. Every month I require more funds to spend. All I want is that you boost the money you send me to $2,000. You're the one in charge of your and Harry's earnings, right? I know you're a useless wife, but you're managing the finances, right? It is the wife's responsibility to manage the household finances. I'm... And all the money you require me to send you more money all of a sudden. I believe that $1,000 is a really substantial sum of money to send you. Your husband is still working as well. You shouldn't be in such financial distress. We're not in any financial difficulty. It's just not enough. Why are you being so obstinate? It costs only $2,000. Do you give a damn about your mother-in-law? I don't dislike you. It's just that I think we're being really generous by providing you $1,000 every month in financial assistance. We must also save for our future, especially if we intend to have children. Didn't we just raise the sum we provided you from $600 to $1,000? I think it will be difficult to spend more than $1,000. Why are you so frugal with such a small sum of money? Just give me $2,000 directly from your paycheck. The problem has been resolved. You know that's not going to happen. Please, no more questions. I have already stated that I will not give you more than $1,000. I'm sure you make a good. You don't need to be so self-centered. You may easily cover your living bills and rent with your paycheck alone. Instead, you can send me $2,000 from Harry's pay. You've gone insane. Do you realize how ridiculous your suggestion is? I'm not crazy. You should simply pay attention to what I'm saying. As your mother-in-law, I expect you to be more respectful. It's not that I don't respect you. I'm just saying that we're not in a position to provide you with $2,000 per month in financial assistance. Okay, then. I'd like you to divorce Harry. Wait, what? Are you certain? You don't give me any cash. 
You also do not become pregnant. I want to abuse my daughter-in-law the way you do. I want to see my grandchildren. And I want money. Get a divorce from my son if you can't do your job properly. I'm going to request that he locate a better woman to marry than you. I want a daughter-in-law who is respectful to me and follows my commands. I can't believe you're talking to me like that. We haven't even begun to consider having children. We intended to save money for ourselves before starting our own family. We'll never be able to save any money if we keep increasing our financial assistance to you. You're one of the reasons we haven't begun trying for a baby yet. Stop creating such ridiculous excuses. All I need is for you to send me the $2,000. You're not pregnant because you work full-time. What is the point? I'm sure your pay is pitiful. Everything you're saying to me is completely ridiculous. You want me to divorce Harry because I won't increase the amount of money we send you? A daughter-in-law who does not listen to her mother-in-law is a complete failure. You are a total waste of time. Get divorced as soon as possible. I didn't expect you to go so far. This time, you've really stepped over the line. Stop interrupting me and shut up. Just do as I say. Increase the amount of money you send me each month to $2,000. Sorry, but that is not an option. If you really need the money, get out and earn it. Stop being so cocky. You're not even making half of what Harry is. If you're not going to send me $2,000, seek a divorce right away. That's all. I've got enough of you mistreating me. I'm getting a divorce. Wait, what? What? Yes, I am serious. I'm going to go to Harry and ask for a divorce. Isn't this what you're looking for? You don't want me to be your in-law's daughter? What are you thinking? All you have to do is give me some additional cash. I can't believe you decided to get a divorce from him. I suppose you never really loved him in the first place. Please stop talking. I'm sick and weary of having to talk to you. What exactly did you say to me? What are you thinking? I'm your in-laws, Mom. Show me some respect. Don't be concerned. You won't be my mother-in-law for long. I just informed you I'm getting divorced because you told me to. I've had enough of you. I don't want to stand married if you continue to treat me like this. You're doing much too much harm to my mental health and bank account. I'd much rather be single once more. I'm going to divorce, Harry. You're going to be the one to explain why we're getting divorced. You'll have to admit that it was your fault. Are you serious about blaming me for everything? I'm not blaming you. This is completely your responsibility. I recently informed Harry that I intend to divorce him. You no longer need to be concerned about having me as your daughter-in-law. I'm packing my belongings and leaving right away. Good. Never come back. That's what you get for defying me. I'm never going to see your face again. One hour later. Mickey, what are you doing? Now is the time to pick up the phone. I need to speak with you. Are you in paying attention? What do you expect of me? I don't want to hear any more of your slurs. I assumed you didn't want to see or speak with me again. Please stop phoning. I didn't want to talk to you. Just that Harry is furious with me. What makes him so upset with me? Are you stupid? Do you really have no idea why he's so upset? He's enraged because you forced us to divorce. It's not my fault. It's yours. This would not have happened if you had simply agreed to pay me $2,000 every month. In any case, the funds are all coming from Harry's income. I'm not sure why you were so frugal. You are, in fact, incorrect. All of the money we sent you came from my income. Is that correct? You must be deceiving me. I'm not deceiving you. Harry just started a new job. He does not make a lot of money. What do you mean? One of his pals asked him to help create a company. They're probably still in the planning stages. What exactly do you mean by this? I'm not getting it. It suggests he isn't yet receiving a regular paycheck. They are just getting started. He's still going through a rough patch. That is why I was the one who sent you all of the financial assistance. Well, I had no idea. Do you understand why he didn't tell you? He knew you'd be opposed to him changing jobs. You always exaggerate the most insignificant details and start spreading rumors to everyone. That's probably why Harry didn't tell you he resigned his steady job. What's the story with that tongue? I'm simply speaking the truth. I'm not making any mistakes. I was the one who gave him money. We were collaborating so that he could concentrate on launching the new company with his friends. Then, out of nowhere, I decided to divorce him. That's why he's mad at you. 
So you're blaming me for everything? Who do you believe is to blame? It's clear that you're to blame here. You told me I should get a divorce if I didn't want to send you more money? That's something I've never heard anyone say. I can't believe you put me in this situation. I didn't expect you'd get a divorce. All of that was merely to get you to pay me a little more money every month. I also know you have no intention of divorcing Harry. You're only saying that to worry me? I am considering obtaining a divorce. I suppose I may finally tell you the truth. Having you as a mother-in-law is incredibly difficult. Seeing your name in my alerts usually makes my day miserable. I was also giving you $1,000 per month from my own earnings. I have no issues with Harry. I wouldn't mind marrying him if it weren't for you. I simply cannot bear the thought of being married to you as my mother-in-law. Hold on a second. Please hurry up and return home. Harry is enraged, and I'm at a loss for words. I'll return home under one condition. You cut ties with both of us completely. If that isn't doable, I'm not returning. What exactly are you saying? I'm not sure what you mean. I was just telling Harry the same thing. If he entirely cuts relations with you, I will remain married to him. That is absolutely not going to happen. I am not breaking off contact with my own son. Remember how we're a family? Stop expecting us to do something we can? Family, please quit making fun of me. I never want to have to deal with you as a family member again. Why must you say that to me? That is extremely offensive. Insulting? What about going over the text messages you sent me today? That is the definition of insulting. Okay, good. I'll admit that I may have talked too much to you. Nonetheless, you're my daughter-in-law. I should be able to tell you whatever I want. You should not be able to say whatever you want to me. Harry just texted me. We've chosen to end our relationship with you totally. What did you say? I also recently discovered that you've been keeping your husband in the dark about the fact that you've been receiving financial assistance from us. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Your husband was apparently perplexed as to why you were purchasing so many new items. You've been buying high-end apparel with the money I've been providing you. What's that? How did I find out about that? Who informed you? Your husband told me everything. He inquired as to why you were suddenly purchasing so many high-end clothes. Goods. Did you just ignore him? I assumed you couldn't tell him how much money you were collecting from me. After all, you were utilizing it all on your own. I'm extremely sorry. I didn't intend to spend it completely alone. It's just that the apparel was more pricey than I anticipated. I just wanted some cash to spend on myself. That's why I ask for a bit more money every month. That is a truly selfish excuse. However, I'm not surprised. You are, after all, that type of person. What exactly do you mean by this? I apologize to you already. By the way, your husband has informed me that I should stop sending you guys money. He told me that receiving money from his daughter-in-law would make him feel awful. For the time being, I've decided to discontinue sending you any cash assistance. What did you just say? You can't quit sending me money. I may consider sending financial assistance straight to your husband in the future because I have faith in him. I will never send you another dime. As I have stated, I will also sever all relations with you. Are you really attempting to get rid of me? This was a joint decision between Harry and me. I'm going back to living with him. This is the last time I'll ever talk to you. It was great getting to know you. Wait a minute. If you disconnect me, I won't have any money to spend on myself. I won't even be able to spend time with my buddies. If you really need the money, get a job. I hope you haven't had to do much housekeeping lately. You must have a lot of spare time. I don't want to go back to work. Also, please do not sever ties with me. I've decided that you will be my daughter-in-law. Please continue to provide me financial assistance. I've now recognized what a fantastic person you are. It's pointless sucking up to me at this point. I'm still going to cut all relations with you. If you absolutely need the money, I urge that you return to work. Please do not contact me again. After that, Diana was no longer financially supported by Harry and Miyuki. She no longer had any money to buy attractive clothes or go out to supper with her pals. Diana had to borrow money from a friend in order to continue living her own life. Her husband grew furious when he discovered how much money she had borrowed from her pals. He told her to take charge and repay her pals with her own money. Diana needed to work because she had no savings. Diana recognized how difficult it was to earn even $2,000 every month.
Rosie, Rosie, are you here? The guy you brought to our house today, his name is Lucas, right? Is it true he is a director of an architecture company? Where did this sudden interest come from? And why discuss it over text when we share the same house? Feel free to talk to me any time, sis. Anyway, why a sudden curiosity about Lucas's profession? I hate to be rude, but that's none of your busness. Oh, come on, sis. Of course it's my concern. He'll soon be part of the family as my future brother-in-law. Plus, with no contact with his family and both his parents gone, he'll be adopting our name, right? I remember you mentioning that. I need to ensure we get along well. By the way, why did you send me a message about getting along with my boyfriend? That's a bit odd. Relax, Rosie. I was just being playful. No hidden meaning there. I know you've had a possessive streak since childhood, but I assure you, you won't be taking Lucas away from me. Huh? Are you serious? Sharon, let's not pretend you're clueless. You clearly remember snatching my boyfriend in high school. Regarding Lucas, he hates individuals like you who view the world solely through their wealth and personal gain. No matter how hard you plan and strive, it's useless. Stop it now before you embarrass yourself. Oh, I'm grateful that my younger sister holds me in such high regard. You really have no idea what you're talking about, do you, young lady? You ride around on your high horse, feigning perfection while looking down on others. But the truth is, money has always made the world go round, and it always will, whether you accept it or not. When there's a tempting opportunity right in front of you, you seize it. That's just how things work, sis. Seems like you haven't learned anything from the past. Your way of thinking led to that massive compensation claim for stealing someone else's husband. Really, you're gonna drag that up? That's practically ancient history by now, about nine years ago. I paid the compensation like a responsible person, so what's the issue? Whatever happened is in the past. No point in dwelling on it, sweetheart. Your nonchalant attitude is unbelievable. Did you conveniently forget about Dad being compelled to retire early, exhausting his entire pension to cover the compensation for your actions? And what's worse, there was no hint of remorse on your part. Mom, regardless of how reprehensibly you behaved, protected you throughout the toughest time. What confused me the most was your audacity to blame Dad for sacrificing a significant portion of his pension by retiring early to bail you out. The only reason we didn't end up homeless was because I had to drop out of college to do three part-time jobs and keep a roof over our heads and food on the table. And you dismiss all of that? You're truly heartless. Are you finished now? Finally satisfied? It felt like you'd never stop talking. You know what, sis? I'm so incredibly bored of talking to you right now. You look like an old recorder that keeps saying the same thing all the time. I think I'm just gonna leave it there. You were the one who initiated this conversation, and now you claim you're bored and leaving. Fine, whatever. I'll be heading to bed. I don't need your constant nagging disturbing my beauty sleep. Why must you always be like this? Please respond me, Sharon. Hey, Rosie, what on earth do you think you're doing? Explain. What are you referring to? Can you please refrain from sending aggressive messages out of the blue? I'm currently at work. I heard you and Lucas got engaged yesterday, and you've already submitted the marriage registration papers. Is that true? Yes, it's true. We're planning to get married. Why does it concern you? How could you do that? What? Are you questioning my decision to get engaged to my boyfriend? Is that a problem? Don't act oblivious. Lucas has feelings for me, not you. Excuse me? There's no way he would willingly sign the marriage registration papers. You forged his signature and submitted them yourself, didn't you? Admit it. Um, no. We genuinely love each other, and we signed them together. Besides, I'd likely end up in legal trouble if I went through with that. Just thinking about the scenario that you sat alone in your jail cell, alone and miserable, crying yourself to sleep at night, gets me excited. Lucas and I could openly express our love without you obstructing us. Candlelit dinners, fancy restaurants, and beach outings. We enjoy those memorable moments together. I might just have to call the authorities right away. I distinctly remember telling you I didn't falsify the documents. Are you finished with your daydreams now? It's starting to give me the creeps. You're lying. Listen, Sharon. Do you have any idea about the extent of your delusions? 
Is there even a hint of self-awareness in there? Huh. Lucas and I will be moving in together, starting tomorrow. It would be appreciated if you acknowledged that he's not interested in you, and refrained from any embarrassing actions, for everyone's sake. What'd you say? Are you two moving in together tomorrow? Exactly. I believe I mentioned this before when we discussed the marriage and him moving in with us. Oh, I do remember you mentioning that. I understand now. What am I going to do with him? He can be distant at times, but I suppose communication has never been his strong suit, right? He's approaching this in a rather indirect manner, but I comprehend it now. I wonder if it's because he's shy. It's actually quite cute. <laughs> huh. What are you referring to? What do you understand? Oh, nothing. Just thinking aloud. Pay no attention. Um, okay. Well, then. I need to do some cleaning. It's time to transform my bedroom into the perfect love nest. Can you imagine how embarrassing it would be if my room was a mess when I invited him in? No need to worry about that. As there's absolutely no chance of him ever entering your room under any circumstances. You may be confident now, but I assure you, sweetie, that won't last long. Hi, Lucas. Ready for today's move? Hey there. Yeah, everything's packed in the van, and I'm ready to go. I set up a small office in my room for you. It's not spacious, but I hope you like it. Thanks a lot, babe. You're amazing. No worries about the size as long as my desk and chair fit. I'm happy. But Lucas, are you sure about this? Living under the same roof as my mom and sister... Considering you mentioned getting fed up with my sister's constant texting over the past six months, it's bordering on harassment now. Well, we've discussed it, babe. It's a temporary situation, right? We'll have our own place someday, and your mom and sister's antics will be a thing of the past. Yeah, I guess. After all, six months of enduring incessant creepy texts is nothing compared to the 25 years you've had to put up with them. I completely understand that you're apprehensive about me moving in with your family, especially when you know exactly what a nightmare they can be. Just believe in me. Of course. I have complete confidence in you. It's just that entering such a challenging situation almost guarantees that you'll face more difficulties than anything you've encountered so far. And that genuinely concerns me. No worries, seriously. There's no need to stress. I'm completely relaxed about it. If I'm prepared for the worst, nothing can catch me off guard, right? I'm well aware of what I'm getting myself into, but if sharing a roof with a troublesome duo is what it takes for us to finally live together, then so be it. Anyway, worrying is officially banned from now on. Trust me to handle the rest, okay? Got it. Thanks. And always remember that I'll be right here by your side. If there's ever anything you need assistance with, just let me know. Rosie, are you here? This is important. Please respond immediately. Is Lucas jobless? Huh. What's wrong? I dropped by your room to greet him. Um, Sharon? Who do you think you are? I explicitly told you not to enter my room without permission. Calm down. I don't follow your orders. Anyways, getting back to the point, I haven't seen him go to work at all. Initially, I thought he might be on vacation or something for the first week. However, it's been a whole month, and he just stays up there in that room. I'm guessing he might be one of those remote workers everyone's been talking about lately. So, I went up to your room to check. You won't believe what I found. He was playing video games and shouting loudly. Oh yeah, now that you mention it, I forgot to tell you that Lucas did quit his job. He did what? Why would he give up a high-ranking position at a major company? Has he lost his mind? He resigned a month ago. Hold on a second. That's when he moved in with us. Yeah, that was. I can't believe it. So right from the start, this was just a scheme for him to leech off us while he sat around eating snacks and playing video games. Huh? And then? You deceived us. We've been tricked. The only reason we allowed him to move in with us was because of his huge salary. What good is he to us now? My plan was to win him over from you. He would divorce you. We'd get married. And I'd live happily ever after without ever having to work again. I've been dreaming of becoming a wife of a director. Wow, you're still daydreaming about this. You really need professional help. Don't be absurd. Anyone in my situation would be thinking the same thing. 
Besides, I'm the kind of prize that's only available to guys with deep pockets. To think he was foolish enough to willingly give up a job most guys would kill for and ruin his chances with someone like me in the process. This doesn't make any sense. I know he's infatuated with me, but I can't understand why he would choose a life of eternal misery with you by deliberately putting himself at the bottom of the social hierarchy. Is he insane? He must have truly lost his sanity. That's the only reasonable explanation for this. You're incredibly out of touch with reality. It's scary. Huh? What did you just say? Apologies, I was just expressing my thoughts aloud. I might feel sorry for him, but he brought it upon himself. Marrying a man incapable of providing for me is out of the question. I'm both confused and amazed that you believe Lucas would ever be interested in supporting you in any way. Regardless, marrying him is pointless now. He's become nothing more than a tragic, impoverished version of his former self. I might feel sorry for him, but he only has himself to blame. You can take him back. I'll even wrap him up with a nice ribbon for you. He never belonged to you in the first place. Keep telling yourself that, you envious little girl. I'm going to talk to Mom now. Expect to hear from us this evening after we discuss how to deal with both of you. I'd brace myself for the worst if I were you. Hey, Lucas. How did things go? Are you okay? Hey, Rosie. Are you mentioning the conversation with your sister? Yes, she just messaged me, and she's extremely angry, completely losing her temper. What did she tell you? She believes you came here to take advantage of her and Mom. She also changed her mind about wanting to involve herself with you, and claims you no longer hold any value for her. I had a feeling she might say something like that. I could almost visualize her getting angry when she entered my room. She turned as red as a tomato, and practically had steam coming out of her ears. Then she shouted, You good for nothing penniless parasite! Lucas, are you finding this interesting? Oops. Is it that obvious? Good grief. What am I going to do with you? Sorry, babe. I couldn't resist because her reaction was exactly what I anticipated. She's so predictable. Anyway, she and your mom just left together in a huff. I assume they need some fresh air to cool off. It's time to proceed with the last phase of our plan. Sure. I just need to head over to the other house, correct? Exactly. I'm nearly finished transferring our belongings. There are a few remaining items at the house, but I'll bring them along in the car when I leave, so no need to worry about that. Our business here is complete. Thank you, Lucas. It won't be much longer now. Safe drive. You too, dear. After careful consideration, Mom and I have reached a decision on how to deal with both of you. Let's start with Lucas. It's truly disheartening how things happen to him. Our expectations were high, and his behavior left us severely disappointed. Despite his substantial salary, he chose to resign from his job, throw away a stable, well-paying career, and ruin his chances of marrying me. This was both irresponsible and foolish. That means he now owes me compensation. I want everything he contributed to his pension over the years and all his savings. Essentially, I want everything he possesses. To put it simply, he must leave the house, leaving behind every last cent he owns, and never return. As for you, your responsibility is to continue providing for Mom and me, just as you have been doing. Additionally, you need to divorce Lucas immediately. My phone was buzzing nonstop, and I had a feeling it might be you. Where are you? Have you left? Or are you working overtime? Nope. That's not correct. Then get yourself back to this house and kick out this unemployed person immediately. If you're referring to Lucas, he's already moved out. Oh, really? He has. I suppose I can't blame him. It must have been pretty painful for him to realize he ruined his chances with me. Unbelievable. You still believe that nonsense. Sharon, I have a question for you. So, based on your reasoning, when someone quits their job, they will become a penniless, lazy loser. And the only thing for it is to cut all ties with them, right? Exactly. I'm so glad he acknowledged his uselessness and left without a fight. Well, it seems we have no choice but to cut all ties with you now. Ha! Huh, how dare you! I just submitted my own resignation, and I'm currently using the last of my paid leave, before bidding my final farewells to the company. What? You did what? All right. I think we're just about done here. I finally got to cut you out of my life forever. What?
Rosie, what are you talking about? No, no, wait a minute. If money is all you're thinking of, I've placed some money in my room for you. It's not our entire savings, as we'll require the rest for our new life together. However, I hope the amount is sufficient to support you for now. Really? How much is it? Around $500,000. Is that enough for you? Well, I suppose it is. All right, you can go in that case. You have both mine and Mom's approval. Thanks, sis. Wishing you a wonderful life. Rosie, what's going on here? What have you done? What's on your mind? Huh. That's weird. I clearly mentioned cutting ties with you in my life. Are you having difficulty understanding basic English? It just mentioned it yesterday. Stop it. Be serious. This is not a joking matter. What's the matter? The $500,000 you left behind was fake money. When I opened the briefcase, it was filled with counterfeit $100 bills from some kid's board game. Oh, that. Lucas purchased those fake bills and the briefcase for a board game with his colleagues. Now they're all yours. You can even keep the briefcase. Perhaps they'll come in handy if you ever find yourself without a home. What? It's ridiculous? Sorry, dear. That's all the money we could afford to leave you. Space in the new house was becoming limited for us, and we didn't know where to store it. We're actually grateful that you took it off our hands. Thanks for helping us declutter. Oh my god, this is impossible. Why are you doing this? Oh, really? That's intriguing. I distinctly remember you granting us permission to depart once I disclosed the amount you were set to receive. Did you forget that? I only said that because I thought the money was real. Nevertheless, it's crucial to point out that we've already severed ties. That means you are a stranger in my life now, and I refrain from communicating with strangers. This is a firm decision, and to ensure clarity, I'll be blocking you now. Wishing you the best. Afterward, we relocated to our new home together. We decided to buy a place far away to ensure that, no matter how hard they search, the chances of us crossing paths again are slim. Regarding the reason why my husband left his job, the income from his side job eventually surpassed what he earned from the company. With everything going smoothly, he decided to transition into full-time freelancing. I also quit my job simultaneously to dedicate more time to assisting with the growth of his business. Now, we're not just spouses, but business partners. I was initially surprised when he agreed to move in with my mom and sister, but it turns out there was a strategic reason behind it. He explained that when we ultimately cut ties with them for good, he wanted to do it in such a way that would leave them in shocked silence, and it seems to have worked. My mother and sister were faced with the loss of her sole financial support, so they had no choice but to seek a job. However, with their lavish lifestyle as before, they still find themselves drowning in debt. 